Just like any career field or sport, skydiving has some unique terminology that we need to learn. A skydiving rig is worn on our back, and you can see that there are two leg straps and one chest strap. It also contains two parachutes, a main parachute and a reserve parachute. In the event that there are problems with our main parachute, we can cut it away with our cutaway handle and deploy our reserve parachute with our reserve handle. We can also see these three silver rings here on each side, known as the three rings, and these attach the harness to our main parachute. There are also two backup devices that can be seen before we open up the rig. The first is known as an RSL, reserve static line, and its role is easier seen in a few moments. We also have an AAD, our automatic activation device. That's a little computer. The AAD detects your velocity as well as altitude, and if you're at a high enough speed, at a low altitude, it will activate your reserve parachute. Now let's open up the skydiving rig. When we are in free fall, we will need to deploy our parachute at a certain altitude, 5,500 feet on this first jump. And this is made up of three phases. The first phase is known as the activation phase. We will grab the deployment handle and throw it out into the wind. The deployment handle is attached to the pilot chute and the pilot chute will inflate with air and then act as a mini anchor while you remain in free fall. The pilot chute bridle will then pull out the main closing pin and this allows the container to open up. And then begins the second phase or the deployment phase. The deployment bag can then be pulled out of the container, releasing the line stows until the parachute can come out. Then begins the third phase known as inflation. As the parachute begins to inflate, the slider slows down the opening and then slides down the lines until it rests just above the risers. The risers rise up from the three rings to attach to the parachute lines. As you can see, each side consists of a pair of risers. We call them the front risers and rear risers. Steering toggles are located on the rear risers. Since the parachute is packed in a half brake setting, before we're able to steer our parachute with the toggles, we'll need to release the excess brake line. We do this by putting our hands through the steering toggles and pulling down smoothly and evenly on both toggles simultaneously. We can now see how the red cutaway handle can release a malfunctioning main parachute. The cutaway handle is attached to yellow cables that activate the three ring release system. Once the cutaway handle and cables have released the main parachute, you can then pull your silver reserve handle. We will be talking about when and how to perform these emergency procedures in a later section. We can also better see how the RSL, or reserve static line, works. The RSL is connected to its own ring on one of the risers. After the cutaway handle has been pulled and the risers have been released, the RSL will leave with the risers and should pull the reserve closing pin as it does so, causing activation of the reserve parachute. The RSL is very easy to disconnect. Simply pull on the tab to open the shackle. In a later section, we will discuss when we might want to disconnect our RSL. We also have some personal accessories that we wear on each jump. You'll be fitted with a jumpsuit, goggles, helmet, radio, and altimeter. The radio is one way only. We can talk to you, but you can't talk back to us. You should also be wearing closed toe shoes that don't have hooks or an open heel. Your altimeter will read in thousands of feet. On average, a person in free fall takes five to six seconds to fall a thousand feet. Therefore, it's important to check your altitude every five seconds. Whenever you encounter a problem, either in free fall or under your parachute, or whenever you don't know what your altitude is. If you can't determine your altitude because your altimeter is lost or clearly malfunctioning, then it's time to initiate your pull sequence.